Hi guys, in this last video for lesson 8.3 um, over combinations, we're going to introduce the idea called complements. And I almost didn't do it, I almost didn't include this in today's notes, but it's something that's really going to be useful for later on. And so we at least want to introduce it here. And if you're not quite comfortable with it today, that I think I'm okay with it for now. Um, but it's really going to help us later on because sometimes it's easier for us to find out how many times something doesn't happen. Okay. And then we use that in order to find the times that it does happen. Okay, so it's kind of like a working backwards approach. It's going to help us tremendously in later problems. So here's an example. During the school year, the girls' basketball team is scheduled to play 12 home games. You want to attend at least 12, at least three of these games. So how many combinations of games can you attend? Okay, well, I could go through, and kind of like the last problem with Shakespeare stuff, I could go through if I wanted to, and I could say, well, I could attend at least three or four or five games, or six games, or, and I could continue that all the way up to 12 games, right? But man, I'm going to have to do like nine, ten different combinations. I mean, really, I don't want to do that. Okay, so the long way to do this would say, okay, I've got 12 games to choose from. I want to find the number of combinations of three of those, and the same thing for four, and all the way down to 12. And then because that's an or statement, I could attend three games or four games or five games. That means I'm going to add all those values together. So I'll take this number and I'll add in this number and I'll keep it all the way down and I'm going to go all the way through 12. Okay, So I'm going to add up all those values. That will get you the correct answer. But there's a quicker way. See, what we could do is we could decide, okay, first of all, how many choices do I have to begin with? And if you look at it this way, you could say, well, okay, um, I have the choice of either yes, attending, or no, not attending, all 12 of the games, right? And so I have two choices for each game, and I, I'm going to attend. I'm going to do that 12 different times, right? I have two choices for the first game, two choices for the second, so on and so forth. And in fact, I'm going to keep that going until I do it 12 times, right? I have two to the 12 total choices to go between. And I raise two to the 12th power. I have 4,096 different choices that can be made. Okay. All right. So that being said. If I have 4,096 4, choices that, I, that, that could possibly happen, different combinations of choices, now what I could do is I could say, well, then how many of those choices involve going to zero games, going to one game, or going to two games? Because those would be the, the ones that don't meet this requirement up above, right? So I, what are the odds that I don't go to at least three games? And so then I can go through and I can say, well, what's, uh, what's 12 in CR? Zero. That's one. What is 12 in CR? One. Well, that's 12. And what is 12 in CR? Two. And that's 66. And so now because it's, I'm adding together, I can go to zero or one or two. 1 plus 2 plus 66 is 79. And so all I have to do then is I could say, okay, well, I had 40,096 choices. 79 of those don't meet the requirement. So if I take those away, 4096 minus 79 is 4,017 choices that do. And this is going to be my final answer. I shouldn't have circled those other things. Okay, This is what I want. So in other words, it's kind of like a work backwards approach. Instead of finding the things that do meet the requirements and taking this and going a really long problem, I could simply find the number of total possibilities that I have and subtract away the ones that don't meet the requirement. Right. So if you're not comfortable with that idea, this 2 to the 12th, and how did I get that, and some of these other concepts, it's fine. Know that you have a way that looks just like the Shakespeare problem, that you could do it. And it's going to take you a little while. So it's going to take longer to do the problems, and then you'll be crunched for time on tests and things like that. But later on, as we get into this, you're going to see more obvious problems where you're going to be like, wait a second. If there's an 80% chance that I, that I pass this test, and I'm asking you about failure, then you could say, well, then there's a 20% chance that I fail it. It's going to make a lot more sense later on when we start talking about odds of things happening. So there we go. There's day three of the notes on combinations. When order does not matter, order doesn't matter. And the other thing we really want to know in is we're going to need to start getting comfortable with the concept of whenever I have multiple considerations to take into effect, um, when do I add 
and when do I multiply? Or means add.